Oh my gosh, hello guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan, and today we're going to be talking about some messy manga today. Oh my goodness, girl. Oh my gosh, honey. Oh my gosh, honey, you're not ready. So I have, let's see, five titles to talk about. Actually, technically six. We're going to talk about six titles today. I'm going to start with the one that I rem just remembered, which is on my Kindle that I've read. And we're just going to do that one first because that way I don't accidentally forget it. So I read the Sakura manga called uh, Sailor Men. And this is a collection of short stories, which is published, I believe, by 801 Media? I think June a, Digital Manga Publishing put it out. Um, it was originally done by a Kickstarter, and it came out in these physical volumes, but they do have the Kindle edition on for just for Sailor Men, unfortunately. And Sailor Men, like I said, it's a collection of short stories. Um, some of them are very, very, very miss. Very, very miss for me. I did not enjoy most of the stories in this book at all. <laughs> and that's really unfortunate because I am a huge fan of Bara. I love, love, love to see the giant giant men, you know, I, I love to see it. <laughs> but unfortunately, a lot of these stories are very not for me at all. There's a lot of trigger warnings for, you know, the usual stuff I don't like, rape, uh, incest, um, uh, young, what is it, what's it called? I, I don't want to say the other word, but it's young people falling in love with older people. Mm, no, it was... Mm, I guess I can talk about that story. I really... I feel weird talking about it because it's... It was not a story I liked. Um, I can't remember what the story is called at all. And my dog is being weird. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. She's, she's crawling around. <laughs> but one of the stories is about a man, or a young man, who falls for his best friend's dad. Hey, yay, oh boy. <laughs> and then you have another story, which is about a pair of brothers. Yay, jumping for joy. I really liked the Sailor Men story, though. I enjoyed that one. It's about a man who is into cosplay, and his boyfriend is very glad that he's into cosplay because that's kind of his thing. And it's really cute, actually. If I remember right, it was cute. Again, a lot of these stories were very missed, so I can't remember which one was my favorite. I do remember one, though, that I want to point out because it's so freaking ridiculous. Um, I don't know what the story's called, because I'm too lazy to open my Kindle and find it and all that. But it is basically about these two boys, not, not four, two boys who are at the beach. Um, they uh, have an established relationship, but I think they just kind of started their relationship. And it's essentially about them kind of, you know, you know, their relationship's just starting. Uh, one of them ends up saving a girl in the ocean. They're at the beach. Um, and basically, the other one gets jealous that he saved her. And then she ends up kissing him. And so, because of this, the boyfriend decides it's a really, really fantastic idea to grab his boyfriend and uh, tie him up with seaweed. With, with, with seaweed. Yes, you heard me right. And uh, basically assault him. Which I know is usually like not my thing at all. It wasn't my thing. But the fact that he ties him up with seaweed. And then it gets even better because he grabs a mollusk off of the rock and he puts it on his, you know, this area. It's so ridiculous. It's so stupid, but it was so funny at the same time. I couldn't, I couldn't help but like it, even though I, I am not, not into the whole consent thing. But it was, it was really, really funny and entertaining. I think that was my favorite story in the collection, and I'm very, very, very sad about that. So now that we talked about that manga for five freaking minutes, let's get on with this pile, because this is going to be a long video, I guess. Oh well. 
So we're gonna start with a manga that is another really ridiculous, funny manga. I laughed my butt off reading this, and that is Man's Best Friend. This is by Taka... I don't remember his name. Her name. Their name. Don't remember. <laughs> Kazuso Takashima, and this one does not have a translator because it is done by Blue Manga, and they don't list their translators, or they didn't back then. At least they didn't for this one. So this story is about a young man right here on the cover. <laughs> I can't, I'm out of it right now. Um, and he is named uh, Ukyo, and he basically um, rescues this stray dog on the back here. And, um, <laughs> well, let's just say that the strange dog um, has a very, very crazy personality. And uh, it turns out that this dog, when he gets excited, he turns into a giant man. Mm-hmm. You know where this is going. Um, it was ridiculous, and I understand the problems, but I laughed so hard. There was one line in here that just, <laughs> it got me, because it basically, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to read it. It makes me kind of uncomfortable, but at the same time, it made me laugh so hard. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna read it, and this is just what the uh, this is just what it, it says in the book, and I I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. God, if you think I'm crazy, you can go ahead and laugh, but. Isn't the crazy one the one who made this crazy world where people fall in love with somebody who isn't human? God, maybe you're the crazy one? I couldn't believe my eyes when I read that. I laughed so hard. It's so stupid and so ridiculous, but I love it. <laughs> So yeah, that is Man's Best Friend. There's also a, another story in this collection, which is called Somewhere, so, oh my gosh, can't read. Summer's Here Again, and this is about two young men who were friends at one point, and then they one of them moves away, and it's about their summer um, coming back together again and becoming a couple. I thought it was really, really cute. I enjoyed this story a lot. It's about the length of Man's Best Friend, so it's a pretty well-developed story. I really thought it was adorable. I love, I love the best friend trope, you know me. Um, so I would highly recommend that story. I think that's my favorite in the collection. And now we get to the last story. Oh my goodness, the last story. So this one is called Princess Goldfish. I'll just let that sink in for a second. Um, it's about a young man who rescues a goldfish from a little boy who is going to basically throw it away. The boy wins it at a fair, he's gonna throw it away, so he takes it home. And this goldfish ends up turning into a man. And um, it's rated M, so um, <laughs> you know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Um, he, <laughs> he did it. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Oh my goodness. It was so freaking funny. I, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. And then there's even a part at the end where he holds up, <laughs> he holds up the goldfish bowl and the fish kisses him. <laughs> I can't. Oh my god. So this was a fun trip. <laughs> this was just a fun read. I can't even knock it for that. It was just fun. I couldn't help it. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. And I loved it. Well, that took five minutes. <laughs> I need to stop. Okay, this is going to be a long video. I don't care. You're just going to have to deal with it. Um, so the next book that I read was another one that um, I didn't end up loving, and but also was very compelled by, and that is Cast Heaven, and this is by Chize Ogawa, and this one is translated by Adrian Beck as well, which is wonderful. Um, and this one is a story about these high school students who uh, live, or they, they don't live in high school, but they end up playing this game, and it's called The Cast Game? Yes, it is. 
Um, so they play this cast game, and it's all about them trying to find, like, a deck of cards. And when they find the deck of cards, there's, like, a, like a cast system, so the higher card you get, the higher you are. So if you get the ace, you're, like, the king, or the king is the highest, I think, I believe. I don't know if there's an ace card, there might be. Um, but it's basically, um, it's got problems. <laughs> So when one of them ends up playing the game, he wants to be the king. And the other boy used to be king. He is this boy on right here, the blonde one. And the blonde one is a very, very mean person. He's always a bully. He's messing with all the kids. And so our main, like, other main character ends up getting the king card. And, well, I'll just say that, um... He assaults him. Okay, so he does that, that's how it starts, and he becomes the king, and it becomes his... his way of revenge, basically, um, and making this young man do anything he wants. And, um, oh, this, this explains it even better, you can read it yourself. There you go. That's, that's what happens. And, um, yeah. It was, um, it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> However, it's not meant to be, like, glorified at all. It's not meant to be a good story. Like, it's meant to be dark. And we find out that the young man also has, like, problems at home, and there's a lot going on with his home life. And we find a little bit more about the other guy. And it was just not an easy read, but it was very compelling. It made me want to read more and find out more about these characters. So for that alone, I say that it, I found it enjoyable in that sense. Like, it's kind of like, like a train wreck. Like, you can't stop reading. That's what the book was for me. I will say that I really did like the secondary couple in this story. Um, which they find out more about later at the end of the book. It's these two boys, and one of them is basically, like, a higher class. He's a jack, and he's part of, like, the popular crew, whereas the other one used to be the, um, the Joker, or the target is what they call it. That's what, what you are if you're the lowest of the low, and you're the victim of whatever the king wants you to do. I didn't really explain that well earlier, but that's what it is, so... These two boys end up becoming friends with one another, and it's a really, really cute romance between these two. I really, really like it. One of them is very, very shy, as you can see, and the other one's just the exact opposite of him. So it's kind of an opposite as tracks sort of situation, and I really, really liked them. I thought it was adorable. And it was it's such a nice contrast from the main couple, because the main couple is a mess, okay? They're a mess. Um, but this one is really, really adorable, and I, I liked their story. So, would I recommend this only if you don't have, like, a trigger for, like, assault and sexual torture and abuse and everything like that. It's it's not an easy read, but it was a compelling one. <sighs> okay, we're finally gonna get to a story that is not making me uncomfortable. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Depression of the Anti-Romanticist, and this one is written by Yasuna Sagi Numa, and the art is done by Riku Yamakami. I'm sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing these names. Um, but this one, let's see if there's a translator for this one, because I can't remember if there is or not. Yes, there is. This one is translated by Ben Sabin. Sabin. Sabin or Sabin? Ben Sab Sabin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Now, uh, this was a really, really adorable read. I thought this would be more of a messy read than it ended up being, but it's basically about these two young men who meet at a host bar, and one of them is uh, very, very kind of, kind of forceful, honestly. He, uh, the blonde one on the cover, is the one who kind of instigates the romance with the host, and 
he kind of like jumps into his life like he's coming over to his house and he's giving his his little brother and sister presents and it's kind of a little off-putting in a way on the uh, honestly like in the beginning it's kind of like he's kind of just moving in and taking over the guy's life so in that aspect i didn't like that but after you get past the first chapter it is a really really cute romance between these two like it's a very very slow build the uh, the uh, the blonde guy does not like force anything he's very very kind and considerate and i really really liked it i thought it was cute um so i would recommend this one for sure it was very very cute so if you're looking for a cute read that is not very very messy like the other ones that i'm going to talk about then i would recommend depression of the anti-romanticist it's cute it's very very cute and a very, very, like, well-rounded story, too. Like, I felt very compelled. and Compelled the whole time, but also, like, I felt like once I finished it, I was very fulfilled by the ending. So I was very happy with that. Okay, time to get back to some mess, because we uh, took a little break and had a little fun with the Dravashino of Manti 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 so it's good that we took a little break and had a little fun with our last read because we're going to be talking about some other very taboo things and uh, you know it's a messy video so it's 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 in it's it's it is home <laughs> it is in its home right here and that is hey sensei by yaya sakuragi and this one is translated by sachiko sato so if you couldn't tell from the title this is a student-teacher relationship story. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. It is. And it is rated mature. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Now, I will say that even though this was explicit, it honestly does a really good job of characterizing these two. Like, I felt like the writer did a really good job of making you care a little bit more than you normally would for these kinds of characters. Like, I think she's a phen phenomenal writer, honestly. She's one of my favorite BL authors, but I honestly could not really get into it, even with that, because I just, I do not like this trope. This trope, this trope is not for me at all, um, and I was not ready for it. I thought I would be because, you know, I really, really love this writer, and it's really unfortunate, because I wanted to like this more than I did, but I just, I just couldn't. It just, it made me very uncomfortable, even with the really good writing. And I will say that the young man does look a lot older, so that is also very, like, nice, I guess, in a way. It makes you less, less creeped out, I guess, but I, I still did not enjoy this as much as I wanted to. Now, would I recommend Hey Sensei? I would if this um, trope does not bother you. I think it's well done. I don't recommend buy paying for it on eBay because the prices going for this are ridiculous and that is not worth the price. No, don't, mm -mm, don't do it, honey. Don't do it. Unless you really, 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 really want it. So it's up to you. But I'm very glad that I paid less than cover price for this because it wasn't my favorite. All right, we're finally to the last book. Finally, the end, just 20 minutes later, you know me. <laughs> I can't stop talking. Um, this one is one of my absolute favorites as well. This is The Carp on the Chopping Block Jumps Twice by Satona Mizushiro. I really, really loved this. And this one is translated by Jocelyn Allen. I believe she also did the translation for the first volume. Uh, this is a sequel to the, the Cornered Mouse Dreams of Cheese. And this is about these two men and their love affair together. Uh, this is obviously the sequel. So it's about their relationship and how it unfolds. And it was an, a complete an utter mess. It was the messiest thing I have ever read in my life. Because these two, these two on the cover, they are not compatible, girl, at all. Not compatible at all. They are like, it's like falling in love with a tree. Not compatible. Nothing can happen. It was so, oh my god. But it was so compelling just reading the, the fallout for this relationship. 
It was insanely entertaining. I was so entertained the entire time reading this. I had so much fun. Again, these two are not compatible at all. As soon as one of them will, like, do something that's, like, you know, kind of nice and sweet, and, oh, we're finally getting to that point where we're together, the other one will say something that ruins it completely. He'll make fun of his mother, and then it's like, well, you just, you just ruined the last two minutes of you guys making up, so now you're fighting again. Oh boy, here we go again. What's going to happen? I wonder. Hmm. <sighs> So it was very kind of frustrating to read because I did, I, I did like, well, I don't even say I liked them together, but it was just a fun ride. I enjoyed myself reading this completely. I really, really loved it a lot. And I would recommend it if you're looking for a really, really good, messy BL story. Here it is. This one is the perfect one. It is the most messiest thing I have ever read in my life, and I loved it. So there you have it, guys. These are all of the BL that I read recently, all of the messy business that we went through this last week. It was a messy week, girl. It was bad. I needed a shower. Okay, I needed a shower every, every chapter of this because holy crap. Holy crap. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them in the comments below, and we can talk about it. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and please remember, for love of all that is gay, stay sexy! Mmm, yes, messy, yes, let's get it. Mmm, yes, 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 yes.